The All Progressive Congress APC has officially flagged off the campaign of its candidate, Governor Uluwaru Timi Akeredolu, for the October 10 gubernatorial election in Ondo State. Speaking at the rally, Chairman of the National Caretaker Committee of the party, Governor Maimala Buni of Yobe State, urged people of the state not to allow anyone to truncate the developmental strides of the Akeredolu administration. Buni stated that APC is known for progress and development across all human endeavors. Also, Governor Babadide Songolu of Lagos, who is also the chairman of the National Campaign Committee for Ondo State, said that Akare Dolu had brought about real development across the state. We're now joined live in the studio by public affairs commentator Jide Benson. A pleasure to have you join us on the news. Good morning. Thank you for having me. <coughs> What's your assessment of this rally? Well, um, it's another show as was done in Edo State a few weeks ago, um, kicking off in grand style with fanfare and, if I may add, show of force or show of power. However, one thing is very evident in that display. It's um, what I would call shame. Um, the governor of Ondo State tested positive to coronavirus. The neighboring Ekiti State governor, uh, the neighboring Ekiti State also had its governor testing positive to coronavirus. Governor Kayadi fired me. I don't know, I wrote me a Kiridulu. I do not see how social distancing existed at that rally. The governor of Lagos State um, has been the poster boy of the fight against coronavirus and is the chairman of the campaign council of Ondo State. I didn't see any of all of that come to play. So what you have is the people who are asking and compelling the people to obey the COVID-19 guidelines, disobeying it themselves. I think I said on this program once that Funke Akindele deserves a national apology. I'm saying it again that she does deserve it. Um, taking it further, um, I'd like to see what the PDP would do and um, the ADC and then the Zenith Labour Party because it's now clearly a four horse race. There are more than four um, contenders uh, in the, there are more than four political parties in the race. But I think that four of them are in the vanguard. Clearly, Rosemary Akiri Dulu with the power of incumbency, Eita Ojegede, who was his main rival in the last um, elections four years ago. And then his current deputy governor, um, Agbola Ajayi, who believes that he's a political heavyweight. And I think it was on Twitter a few days ago that um, he's the only deputy governor who has been in that position and has moved from one party to another and to another. So he's a seventh deputy governor. He was in the APC, and then he moved to the PDP, and now he's in the Zenith Labour Party. Um, All right. I, I, want, I wanted to um, quickly ask you before mm -hmm. um, I lose my train of thought. The obvious lack of social distance, and not just at this um, rally. Yeah. We've seen other rallies in yeah. other parts, yeah. Edo State, for instance, yeah. that there was a clear um, disregard for the issue of social distancing yeah. and the basic protocols. Even those that are wearing face masks, you see them all skewed uh, somewhat. Mm. Shouldn't this be part of the assessment for voters in, you know, taking these people to account if they cannot obey set down rules aimed at curtailing the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. How sure are they that they will follow through with the promises that they are making at this same rallies? The people have been, what, weather beaten. And don't forget that the average or ordinary man on the street doesn't be, even believe that there's coronavirus. Something that is just a scam by the government to amass wealth or to embezzle is a distraction according to the man. But, it's unfortunate that um, the government has also allowed such um, thoughts to spread. And that's because the promises that have been made in times past have not been fulfilled. So the people who have attended those rallies, trust me, they've been mobilized, whether with face caps or with t-shirts or stipends. When it comes to election day, the same thing is going to happen. Some of them are going to be induced to come out and vote. So when you talk about vote buying, it's going to be, it's going to be made manifest in different forms. So, I mean, the people, may not be that discerning to worry about COVID-19. Some people think that COVID-19 is a rich man or an elite um, ailment or disease. Mm, yeah, quite unfortunate narrative you're putting it out uh, there. But uh, 
let's move a little away from the uh, um, respecting of um, protocols for containing COVID-19 yeah. to the presence of uh, what many say is the big wigs yeah. in APC, the yeah. likes of uh, Tinubu, Songwulu, yeah. and others, um, Bala, also uh, yeah. that uh, rally. Yeah. Is this a fight to the finish or, um, I mean, it's a show of force. What's the difference? It's a combination of both. Um, a show of force because they're, in power, they're, the, um, they're the party in power. So they must arrive and the world know that they have arrived in Ondo State. Uh, I do not think that the PDP would attempt to do any different. If you see what has been happening in Ondo State, um, social distancing and all of most of the protocols of COVID-19 has been combined, has been consigned to the dustbin of history. Um, going forward, we are going to continue to see this. So um, we might as well just take a position nationally that we're done with coronavirus. Let's go back to our old normals and forget to talk about the new normals. Um, I do not see that the PDP will do anything different. I do not see that the Zenith Labour Party will do anything different and even the ADC. Okay, uh, does this imply that yeah. Tinubu and Akere Dolu, there seem to be some issues with them? Have they resolved their uh, quarrels? Well, um, so when you ask me that kind of question, I'll take you back to what happened in the palace of the Oba of Benin a few days ago, where Ize Yamu and Obasaki hugged each other. Would you say that they've mended fences? No, they haven't. That's just for the cameras. Yeah, but Tinubu has to play the big brother, brotherly role. He cannot be seen to be working against his party. Because Ruti Meakiri Dulu was his um, candidate, I think it was in 2012 or 2013, when he ran against Mimiko. Mimiko beat him silly. But by the time the elections were to hold again in 2016, he had um, pitched his tent with um, Olusegun Abraham. And this was one of the things that caused the rift between him and um, Oyegun, I can't remember his first name, Chief, o, Chief Oyegun, the former national chairman of the party. Chief o, Oyegun had his way by ensuring that Akiri Dulu became the candidate of the party and eventually became governor. And for the, for the greater part of um, Akiri Dulu's first term, I don't think that he and Tinubu were allies, so to speak. But having won the ticket again this time, I think he would have no choice but to support the party, maybe not Akiri Dulu in person. Because again, if what we hear is anything to go by, he has his eyes on 2023 and is going to need all of the chief executives. Well, until he confirms it. Well, that's why I said if what we hear is true. It's, it's, <laughs> it's still in the realm of speculation. Okay. Um, let's talk about the chances of the candidates yeah. now. Um, uh, for under the, the events in Edo State seem to overshadow what's going on in other parts. But okay. what are the chances of these candidates? Well, okay, first I'll say the, the, the drama in Edo State over, um, towers well above that of Ondo State because of how it has played out. The, the person of Adam Shiomole and the way he went about his fight. He fought dirty with Obaseki, costing him his position, and he's fighting tooth and nail to ensure that he still remains the political what, gladiator in that state. Now to Ondo State, the drama played out much less. Um, the drama was more between the governor and his deputy, and that did not seem to get much attention as understood. But the, the chances of the candidate, I think that Akiri Dulu still has a very good chance, regardless of um, what anybody may say. The, the, the political permutation in Ondo State is that um, there's supposed to be rotation from one uh, central district to another, so the Ondo North, the Ondo Central, and the Ondo South. Um, Mimiko will be a major player and how it goes. And this time around, he has on his side, or his party is fielding the current deputy governor of the state. So there's, there's no way it won't split the votes. Um, so one cannot say for certain that any candidate, but I'll, I think I want to predict that it will be between the APC, the PDP, and the ZLP. We'll have you back here after the elections to find out who wins and then... Uh, on October 12. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'll be here we'll, we'll have you back here The elections will be on October 10, so by happens. October 12, we'll know who the winner is. I mean, uh, before we go, we need to talk about the citizens, the people that who these parties yeah. want to lead. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them, those that are watching now, as these whole shenanigans play out when, it talk, when we talk about uh, politics in Andalus? So you want me to talk to the citizens? Yes, please. Right. They're going to induce you with Money. they are going to induce you with all manner of things collect those things but do what your mind tells you vote for whoever you think would advance your cause would make your life better because politicians are politicians and would remain politicians thank you very much for coming on the news thank you for having me